by virtue of you being here, you simply must know that you are no longer in the ordinary world. Historically, attending a college or a university was reserved for elites, the sons of nobility, the titular offspring of the aristocracy. Yes, these nearly always young men, not the daughters, attended schools to perpetuate a generational cycle of raising new elites, new nobles, new aristocrats to replace the ones that aged and passed on. So these new men saw themselves as special and were treated as such by all facets of society, even by the <clears throat> ordinary. But in the 18th century, in places like England, occasionally a young man of modest means attended an elite school, William Pitt, for example. Now he had a grandfather who was the son of a mere reverend in the Church of England. And adventure took hold of William Pitt's grandfather. So off to India he went, he stole a bunch of diamonds, sold many to the French, was caught, found guilty, and paid a substantial fine, but the remaining fortune allowed William Pitt himself to enter into Oxford as a <clears throat> gentleman commoner. So throughout the 19th century, we do witness some increase in the number of non-elites attending schools, but their numbers remained relatively minuscule. Universities also remained few in number, and life within them was regimented and sparse. There was, after all, a certain prevailing view that most commoners were incapable of learning. So the next collegiate revolution did not occur until the 20th century, after the Second World War, and then mostly right here in the United States, the GI Bill became law in 1944. Returning veterans, mostly men, mostly white, were congratulated and thanked with a college education the federal government footing most of the bill. Now over a million and a half participated and so most demographers, most economists, sociologists, historians consider the results of the GI Bill a stunning success. This GI generation then gives birth to the baby boomers, then the Gen Xers, then the millennials. So truly for only three generations have the commoners been able to in mass attend colleges and universities. So if you look at the long history of colleges and universities, you are indeed in an extraordinary position. Now, for whatever reason, you were called to be here. For some of you, that call was strong. You know exactly what you want and you possess a keen sense of how to get there. But for most, this is not the case. You're just testing the waters. But even so, you too were called because here you are. In short, all of you are no longer in the ordinary world. You have dared to become extraordinary, just like William Pitt in the 18th century and just as the returning veterans of World War II did in the mid 20th century. You have been summoned. So what's next? I want you to assume the role of the hero, like Frodo carrying the ring to Mordor, or like Eowyn chopping off the head of the Nazgul and smoting the Witch King of Angmar. Now is the time to go on your hero's journey. Now is the time to control your own destiny. Now is the time to think and act like the heroes of old. Okay, that was fun. But do this for me. When you get stuck, when things get frustrating, Try and think what a hero would do. And remember, you are not on this journey alone. Joseph Campbell wrote way back in 1949, quote, We have not even to risk the adventure alone, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. The labyrinth is thoroughly known. We have only to follow the thread of the hero path. You are the hero. College is your domain. Welcome. Welcome to history.